everybody, this is Philip Martin, and this is On Film on Video, December 17th, 2021. December 17th was my father's birthday, and he would be, he would be 85 if he had lived, and uh, thanks, Dad. No. But anyway, um, and as we've been discussing these past few weeks, we are coming to the end of the year. We have officially gotten past all the voting that I do. So I have seen all the movies that I could see up until like last weekend. And now I can relax a little bit because it doesn't really matter. Uh, I've already turned in my ballots. I already have made my you know choices of the best movies of the year and already forgotten them. I mean, I, I sort of know that I think that The Power of the Dog really is you know, one of the year's best films. Now, I'm not given to the hyperbolic, you know, the claiming that it is the year's best picture. I don't know that. I don't. Um, I, I think it's all too subjective and that for your cho for your purposes, maybe there's another more worthy movie. You know, I mean, but Power of the Dog did it for me. I did not see some films. I mean, I, I, I really regret... Not seeing uh, the tragedy of Macbeth, the Joel Cohen film with uh, Denzel Washington and uh, Francis McDormand. I think that had I seen that film, I would probably like it a lot because uh, I've seen the trailer. I know about the people involved. Uh, I know my own sort of you know predilections. Uh, I would think that I would probably like that movie a lot. Um, I'm not going to gripe about this, but it's like Apple TV promised me the film and it never showed up in my app I mean it showed up in some people's apps I know because I think Keith Garlington saw it good I think Piers uh, Marchant has seen it uh, so I don't need to see it for practical reasons I'll see it when it comes out now uh, but you know I kind of wanted to see it before I voted but I didn't so it didn't get considered um, my fault on West Side Story because I actually could have seen that but I was just too busy you know, so uh, I did not get out last Friday to see that before I voted. I still haven't seen it. Uh, what else didn't I see? I didn't see Being the Ricardos. Um, it's kind of a sore subject, too, because it opened last week, and I didn't realize it was going to open last week, so we didn't have a review of it last week when we actually had a review on hand last week. Okay, what else didn't I see? Um, pretty much that's it. Pretty much. I mean, there's... You know, I didn't see Nightmare Alley, um, which, again, I think that even though I'm not the world's biggest Guillermo del Toro fan, and it has nothing to really do with him. I mean, I love his aesthetic. I love the look of his films. I just don't always get that sort of fantasy horror kind of thing. It's just not my jam. All right, but this one looks like it might be my jam because it's that neo noir. It's actually a throwback to the original film noir, and it's got that wonderful look. And it's got these wonderful actors, and Kate Blanchett looks wonderful in it. And I just think that I would like this movie a lot. I haven't seen it. I'll see it this weekend, or or not. I might see it later. I don't know. Uh, let's see what other big films I have not seen. Not many. Not many. Um, seen. Come on, come on. I've seen, you know, um, yeah, I'm driving my car. Most of those I've seen. I'm uh, pretty well satisfied with how I got through the voting season. And there's interesting things that developed. You know, for instance, I didn't see The Green Knight until um, screener season. And I thought I would like it because I like David Lowery um, a lot, the director. And I like Dev Patel. And, you know, I just sort of, like, trusted that. Uh, and I did not trust the uh, the last duel as much. Or the Ridley Scott, Ben Affleck, uh, Matt Damon, Jodie Comer, Adam Driver, and I actually liked both of those films. But I liked the last duel quite a bit more. I mean, sort of. I I was really intrigued by the last duel, and I think it got a bad shake at the box office. I, and I don't know how the critical reaction was to it. I don't think it was. Uh, I don't think it was savaged exactly, but I don't think it got really good reviews either. So, 
you know, interesting things are developing. Uh, uh, I had some trouble, you know, like there's a really good documentary called Flea that is an animated film. But I don't know. I mean, it's sort of like I kind of like to vote for documentaries in the documentary category and kind of even though I say that, I think there were three documentaries in my top ten this this year. I think so. I think there were three. Um, I don't have my top ten in front of me, and it doesn't really matter because it don't, but I know the Beatles Get Back was in there, and I know uh, Velvet Underground was in there, and I think the first wave was in there. So that would be three of these documentaries I picked for my top ten, and Flea wasn't among them. Uh, so do I go and put Flea in the animated film category? Well, maybe not, because, I mean, I really think the animated category, we ought to really uh, pay attention to the animation, not just the quality of the movie, not just if, if Flea is a movie that I think is, is interesting and worthwhile and stuff like that. I still think that in the animation category, it's topped by the better animation or the animation I think is more innovative or whatever. So, you know, something like The Mitchell versus The Machines or Crypto Zoo might be a better animated film than Flea, even though Flea, F-L-E-E, -E, uh, which is an animated documentary, might, you know, might be a better film. I don't know. I mean, it's sort of like, this is the weird thing about trying to put things in slots and bins. I wouldn't be very good at that. Um, you know, I'm, I, don't, I don't really believe in it. And like I've said before, art's not a competition. And we oughtn't, you know, think of things these ways. We oughtn't think that this is the best, this is the second best, this is the third best, this is the fourth, this is the fifth. And, and some people are really adamant about this stuff. And they go, this is my favorite movie, this is my second favorite movie, this is my third favorite movie. And it doesn't change over the years, you know. It's sort of like, I like Roger Rabbit. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I don't get that. I mean, you could wake me up at any time, any, you know, any middle of the night and ask me what my favorite films are. And uh, I could give you any number of things. I mean, there's probably a hundred films that I could put in my top ten at any given time. And I think most people are like that. I don't think we are actually uh, these taxonomic animals that, that, that just, you know, order things this way and think of these things this way and I don't know if it's really valuable I mean it's valuable to your consumers in a way in that you can mention things and and raise their consciousness about movies that you maybe wouldn't other otherwise think of like if I say if I throw crypto zoo out there most of you probably have not heard of Crypto Zoo, even though it was a, a Sundance film and it had some buzz early in the year. is really good. And it is really interesting. It's a really interesting, you know, animated film, adult animated film. Uh, and I'm throwing it out there because some of you might really want to look at that and, and, and watch it. Some of you would really like it. Not everyone. You know, I mean, more people are going to like uh, the Mitchell vs. Machines, or Luca, or Encanto, uh, if you're looking for animated films, then you are going to look at CryptoZoo. But CryptoZoo is out there, and it's, you know, a trippy movie. And some people like trippy movies a lot. Uh, and that's probably subconsciously why I mentioned it on my ballot and just now in this, um, in this video. Because... I'm not really here to tell you these are the best films. I'm here to tell you, wow, you should think about this. You know, you should think about um, this isn't a war story. This is not a war story. That film, which was not surprised me, actually got nominated for, I think, a couple of Independent Spirit Awards uh, this week. It won't get nominated for an Academy Award. It's not that kind of movie. It's a. It was made for less than a half a million dollars. Uh, I don't know that anybody else other than me and Karen, because I saw her ballot, printed her ballot actually, uh, mentioned that film in our in our Sefka ballots. So I don't know about that. I mean, so somebody might have. Maybe if they release, and sometimes they do, sometimes they send around a final voting thing. Um, I don't blame them if they don't, because it's a lot of work to compile this stuff. But, you know, if they send around a final voting tally, 
I can look at it and I can tell whether this got any more votes or not. But the point is, I mean, I didn't expect it to be in a top ten of the of the, of Sefka's top ten. Um, I just wanted it to get some sort of mention somewhere. Um, and do I think it's a better film than say, Come on, Come on? Eh, not really. I mean, maybe some people are going to perceive it as that. I like both those films. Um, I, you know, it's sort of like it's really kind of. I, I, I am sort of drawn to this tactical voting to get things noticed more because I don't really believe in the whole system. I mean, I really, I, I see the utility of it. I see the utility of having a list. People like list. People like to see how people vote. Um, I would pour over them, you know, sports stuff is really what I, you know, the, like the most valuable player awards and stuff like that. Uh, it's interesting to see how people think. It doesn't really inform my idea of what the best movie is, and I'm sure it doesn't inform your idea of what the best movie is. Now, maybe if there's something on that list that you haven't heard of, or that you had an idea about, and all of a sudden it shows up on a best of list, maybe you might reconsider it or something like that and I think that's the highest and best use of these things I mean it's just to get a lot of titles out there and to get people talking about the movies and get people thinking about the movies I you know I was really pleased that the power of the dog did so well in Sefka's balloting you can read that over there you know up here read about all the Sefka balloting um, I was very pleased about that I was sort of surprised not terribly surprised. I thought that Power of the Dog had a really good chance to win. Uh, apparently, it did won by quite a margin. We don't know. I don't know exactly the margin it won by. Um, Matt Goldberg, in his in his column announcing the winners, he was privy to the voting because he's president, as I was for five years. He was pri privy to the voting. He said that it would dominate it, basically. And it was a runaway winner. And I'm surprised by that because um, I'm always surprised when anybody has, when there's any group has, like this consensus of opinion. Because I think that it, it's really easy to make, you know, cases for other films. I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised if West Side Story had gotten a lot of um, support for, you know, the best film of the year. I wouldn't have been surprised if something like... Um, Oh, I don't know. Um, I, I said, come on, come on, but I don't really think that's it filmed in black and white and stuff like that. Maybe Belfast, another one's filmed in black and white. Um, or The French Dispatch, which I think is a, is a film that film critics especially are going to like and writers are especially going to like. But, uh, you know, I mean, it is surprising Power of the Dog dominated in that Cumberbatch won uh, in... Best Supporting Actor, uh, Cody um, McPhee Smits. Is that his name? I should know, but I, I can't remember. The kid from the road. <laughs> but, he, you know, he, um, you know, and that it won, and did it win? I know, I should have won. It should have won score. I'm not sure it did. It should have won its best score. Um, but it didn't, I don't think, because I'm not looking at it. I voted for it best score. I think Johnny Greenwood just did an amazing job with that. But, you know, and the cinematography is great. Even though it does not, even though I'm reading in the book, they send you this big book that's, I was reading the book that they tested it and they said, that well, people couldn't tell New Zealand from Montana. They showed it to Americans and said, was this New Zealand or is this America or this Montana? And nobody could tell. Well, I could sure tell. Of course, I have had the benefit of being in New Zealand. But the New Zealand um, landscape is really sort of amazing, and it is, I think it's evocative of a maybe brawnier uh, Montana than what we're used to. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure Bra Montana has some really spectacular scenery. In fact, I know it does. But uh, some of these trees are very... Uh, kiwi type trees so I'm calling a little bit of BS on that Jane Campion uh, I think you shot it in New Zealand because you want to shoot in New Zealand and I think that's great 
you being a New Zealander and all, and I think it was wonderful. It certainly didn't hurt to film, but I didn't think it was in Montana. That's for sure. Okay. But yeah, again, we had a. It was it. It really won a lot of categories, and that surprises me because usually these things get spread out. Because I know my own tendency is my own ballot is if uh, is to spread things out. The one exception is um, I don't know why the best director is not always whoever directed the number one movie of the year, the movie that wins, you know, that tops the poll. Whoever produced that or or made that and the director is the closest thing to the maker of the film, um, that's who is the best director, right? I mean, I, I just don't get it. I mean, it's sort of like, I can understand how the Most Valuable Player Award might go to somebody whose team finishes second, but, and maybe it's a, maybe that's a good analogy. Maybe, now I think about it, you know, you could have some really, isn't quite as good as the best film, but your performance is better. I, it's hard for me to imagine that, though, because it just seems like... And for instance, this, the, Campion, Jane Campion in um, Power of the Dog, it's like she's inside you and she's controlling you. It's like she, you think what she wants you to think when she wants you to think it. Exerts. At least she exerted on me. Because I fell for everything. And I mean, I was watching critically, seeing around the sides, thinking about other things than you know, doing, approaching it with a critical faculty. Okay? I can't get away from that. You know, I can't just be a fan and watch a movie. I mean, I can try. And, you know, but, you know, I'm watching Succession and I'm thinking about camera angles and I'm thinking about the costume design and I'm thinking about why the clothes are ill fitting on these rich people and there's a reason that they're making all these clothes ill-fitting on these rich people and ill-fitting and uncomfortable looking because these people are not comfortable in their own skins um, side, sidebar on succession over now but see I think about that even stuff I'm not going to probably you know write about or even you know um, need to know about I, I, it's hard for me to relax I mean I, I do the same thing with sports I do the same thing you know watching a basketball game watching a baseball game I have this analytical faculty and it's not always the best way to watch something usually the best way to watch something is to go in and go ooh and ah you know so I try to do that sometime alright um, let's see what else it's almost Christmas. It's almost the end of the year. Um, we have packed a lot in this year. Uh, I hope you like what we're doing. We're doing different things. Um, we're trying to get more voices. We're trying to, you know, really center on the conversation about, you know, what's going on in the movies. And the movies having this larger definition than we used to have. And to that point, sometimes we'll write about a movie more than once. For instance, um, I know that uh, it may be online today. I hope so. I hope I, we get this online. I don't really know if they'll let me do this. But I want to put Piers's, uh review of Nightmare Alley online to go along with the um, Keith's review, which is on um, the app and on, you know. And I might run Piers's. In fact, my idea, original idea was to run it as a second take next week because we're going to need a lot of stuff next week when I'm on vacation. Or actually, yeah, the week after that's when I'm going on vacation, but I still need to work ahead. Thank you for holidays. I just have to do more work in less time. That's what holidays are. Uh, <laughs> not your problem. I get it. Anyway, we're at 20 minute mark. I've got a message up here saying your disk is almost full. Save space by optimizing storage. So I'm going to have to probably get rid of some of this stuff so we can put this on the internet anyway. So anyway, take care. We'll talk to you soon. Um, Merry, well, there'll be one more of these before Christmas, but enjoy your holiday. I've got two parties this weekend. Looking forward to them. Wear your mask. Be good. We'll see you later.